Back home again to win with tonight, an abuse survivor, Māori abuse survivor, says the government's refusal to hold an inquiry into historical abuse of children in state care is yet another letdown for the victims still dealing with their childhood trauma. Eugene Ryder was only 11 years old when he went into state care where he was beaten and sexually abused. He attended a panel discussion held at Victoria University in Wellington today where calls for an independent inquiry were renewed. The Prime Minister Bill English doubts an inquiry will achieve anything, a position that Mr Ryder told our reporter Lee Marama McLaughlin demonstrates the government still doesn't have his back. I've never expected to feel any love from the government but um, I was surprised by their reaction um, given um, the amount of support and publicity for independent inquiry and I take um, the current government as somewhat pragmatic and, and given that yesterday they announced you know two billion dollars going into what I'd consider unfair treatment of care workers um, that they take the same stance with those that have been abused in state care but they haven't that's unfortunate. Since Eugene Ryder went public about being beaten and abused as a child in state care, he says lots of people have been messaging him on Facebook offering support, but also sharing their own tragic stories. He describes his response as shock and horror. Between the 1940s and early 1990s, 100,000 children were in state care. Mr Ryder says there needs to be an independent inquiry into the abuse he thinks many faced, but he's not holding his breath. There's a public assumption that this happened to a handful of children. I think a handful of children it didn't happen to. You know, and so that will shock the nation. Um, and I think um, the government is looking at it from a, a financial lens. One of the speakers at Victoria University today was Judge Carolyn Henwood, the former chair of the Confidential Listening and Assistance Service, whose report highlighted the extent of historical state abuse. She says it could be the source of many problems in our community today. Every day we are very concerned in New Zealand right now that um, we have um, high levels of child abuse, children getting murdered, um, and violence, domestic violence, and we, we worry about what we're going to do about it. And yet, do we really understand the nature of our community and how it links back to policies of the past, maybe decades ago, that have fed into this? And, you know, the creation of gangs, all of these matters um, and all of these issues have come from the past. The head of the Māori Women's Welfare League, lawyer Pru Kapua, says the government's response is a smack in the face for those victims who have come forward. To continue to say we're not going to have an inquiry, we're not going to address the systemic issues, we're not going to look at how we can do it better, it kind of uh, undermines uh, where they're coming from and the efforts that they're doing and what they're having to live with, and no government should be doing that to people. Sonia Cooper is the principal of Cooper Legal, which represents more than 700 victims of state abuse. She says going through the courts for any resolution is too challenging, and without an independent inquiry, the victims have a slim chance of ever getting justice. For Checkpoint, Kuli Marama McLaughlin Tene.